If I was starting Foxscapes in 2024, this is what I'd do. Hey, it's Nathan with Foxscapes again. We had a couple comments on our last video regarding branding, uh, starting a business, what we would buy. We've had uh, a couple people reach out, you know, whether it's a dingo, an excavator, all that uh, when it comes to equipment. And it's kind of funny because uh, we were talking about it and it really, when starting a business, it's not the equipment as much as everyone thinks it is. We kind of narrowed it down and uh, thought about really what makes Foxscapes, Foxscapes and what it was that I wish I did when starting out or if I were to start again, you know, Foxscapes, what would I buy or what would I do? And I thought about it a lot and it really came down to nothing with equipment. It, it was it was really talking about branding and, and business structure and uh, the community and how you're reaching out. Uh, the joke of the industry is always, well, there's, you can go buy an excavator and start your own company today. And, um, and I guess you could say that's true, but uh, without work, you can't pay for that excavator. So uh, the first thing we wanted to touch on was the branding. As you see behind me, the, these are uh, our enclosed trailers couple of them it's kind of funny because they're never here but uh, just the way the sites were working out today they didn't need the trailers they were kind of moving just heavy equipment and uh, doing some dig outs but regardless uh, we did the Foxscapes logo on all of our trailers and you'll see on all of our trucks and when we started out it wasn't Foxscapes it was a company called Four Seasons is what I named the company and uh, in 2020, we changed to Foxscapes, and I wish previously we would have done that sooner. The amount of money that you spend on marketing, the amount of money that you spend on door hangers and designs and truck logos and um, all of that money, you know, I, I've spent thousands and thousands of dollars on that. One central brand, we did it in 2020. Uh, me and a buddy from high school did it. Uh, it was a ton of work, a ton of, you know, color options and what is it that you want in your logo and how do you want to represent your business the wording the structure the you know what is it that you're trying to portray to the customers um, we spent a bunch of time on that and so now we're we're finally to the point where it's great you know the brand is recognizable the trucks all match we're not changing their designs consistently uh, our door hangers our social media our trucks our invoices everything is matched and so when the customer sees it all it, it, it's all cohesive and so that is probably the first thing i would do uh, starting out a company again would be making sure i have my brand in place making sure i have all of my marketing and uh, invoicing and all of you know the stuff that the customer sees the customer side all being consistent all being picked out so that there's not questions going forward or or changing because um, that costs thousands. And when you're putting in that kind of investment, you want to make sure that it's you're not getting rid of it in two years. And we kind of went through that phase and it cost us a little bit, but now, like I said, everything's cohesive, everything matches. Um, the customer from start to finish feels like they're they're dealing with the same company. So like I said, trailers all match. You know, one thing I will point out with the trailers um, and with all the brand is, you know, our fonts, you know, are already pre-picked. The color, this isn't black. This is our, our gray. The orange is our orange. You know, um, this, this uh, I think it's like a, I can't remember the degree of the angle, but this angle on the trailer is the same angle on our trucks and the same angle on our website and the same angle on all of our stuff. The angle, as much as it seems like, you know, maybe not that important, it's, people notice it people feel like it's it's streamlined it's it feels like it was well thought out which can help sell the job so again first thing branding that would be the first thing i would do starting a company get your branding in order whether you're doing it by yourself you're creative enough to do that great if you're not you can reach out to branding agencies themselves uh, or you can get on like fiverr and get at least a logo going and then kind of working from there um, that's the first thing we do Second thing I would do when starting a business would be the business structure, making sure I understand what my cost is, what my inputs are, and making sure that I'm covering myself. 
you know, when you start getting into equipment like this, this is a leaf loader. It seems like a harmless machine that, you know, we use just to load leaves. It's, uh, we just got it uh, last week and it's a great asset to have, but it's also a liability. Um, somebody could get their legs stuck, you know, or hit their shins when they're kicking leaves in, you know, bust their leg open. The trailer could always, you know, God forbid it happens, but let's say it pops off the truck um, or, you know, just something catches on fire. All those accidents that you, you never even know what, what could happen, but things happen and, and you never want that to happen. You can be preventative as much as you want, but covering yourself, making sure that you have the right insurance, making sure that you have, you know, the, <laughs> the right business structure in place. So if something does go wrong, you're protected um because th it's inevitable something's going to happen at some point in time so you know having that in place huge second thing with a business structure is understanding your pricing this machine here you know how do we make sure that we're covering cost having a pricing you know to make sure that we're covering the cost of the machine the guy the equipment everything that is going into it and able to make a profit because at the end of the day that's why we're in business we have to make money um, so working on uh, understanding depreciation schedules, understanding when you're gonna get rid of a piece of equipment, how much you know you should be charging for that piece of equipment. And, and I know that people are gonna ask for that video uh, and we're gonna work on that video soon, but making sure that you set yourself up on a business side before you go to the customers. So many times are people, oh, I'm gonna start a business and I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna do the job for two grand less than the, the next guy. Well, maybe the two grand was the money that you actually really needed to actually make something on the job. And, and that you see all the time, guys that wanna start these businesses, wanna get into it. And it's, it's, an, it's amazing and I encourage people to open a business um, you know, if they're able to do that. But at the same time, don't screw yourself. Make sure you understand your cost. Make sure you understand that you know, you gotta live, you gotta eat, and your customers need to know that too. And then third in a business is understanding how to, whether you're gonna have employees or not. You know, how are you gonna structure that? For the first four years in business, we didn't have an employee handbook. We didn't understand what that even was. I didn't think it was important. And now, having 30 plus employees, having an employee handbook is huge. It fights, uh, it's a fighting chance if somebody tries to file a lawsuit against you that you fired them um, without cause or that you you know they file for un unemployment well why'd they get fired did you talk to them oh well now this guy who maybe didn't show up to work for two weeks he's collecting unemployment on your dime because you didn't have a policy in place that was made aware to the employee um, or at least posted at somewhere in your business um, so like i said that's what we're learning as we're growing but those would be the three things on a business structure that I would work on before really ramping up your business. The final topic I wanna to talk about if I was starting a business again is your community relationship. And you might be wondering why are we in a shop or why is that the backdrop? But the, the biggest one is, is your dealer support. Um, you know, buying equipment locally if you can. Not only is that gonna help you with maintenance, but they're your advocate. You know, somebody comes in and is looking, you know, if you're owning a lawn care business, they're looking for a lawnmower. Hey, our mower broke down. Who should we call to get it, you know, before our, mower, our new mower comes in? Oh, you should call Foxscapes or whoever you are. You know, the amount of times that we've had that happen, I can't even count because of our dealer support. And that also is in with your community. How supportive of you are you of your community? Are you, uh, involving yourself with the people around you, whether that's your family. Hey, this is, you know, my business this is what I'm doing. You know, getting them excited about what you're doing. <laughs> they're gonna be an advocate for you. You know, your neighborhood where you live, they're gonna advocate for you once you start doing work in there. Um, starting at eight years old, you know, I was walking around the neighborhood and I would knock on the door and say, hey, can, can I cut your grass for $10 or whatever it was at the time? Creating that engagement with your community, again, you can own the excavator, you can own the truck, you can own the trailer, you can set up your business, you know, uh, you know, get your pricing and your structure all done 
And you, and you can even have your marketing set up. But if you don't have the community connection, you know, you're not gonna go anywhere because you need that support. You need that word of mouth to travel. You need, hey, I, who am I gonna call? Foxscapes, who am I gonna call? You know, Nathan, all, you know, whether it's you or your brand or your name and eventually, like at Foxscapes, we're getting away from, you're calling Nathan, you're calling Foxscapes. Because we, you know, we're getting to the size where I can't take all the calls. But like I said, what it really is, is building that relationship with the community, building it with your dealer, building it with your suppliers, building it with your neighbors, you know, building it on Facebook, you know, posting in the group or commenting on, on the posts that people make of, hey, I need a landscaper, I need a, uh, a guy to clean my gutters or whatever it is. You, you see those posts all the time. Getting involved in those in the beginning so then that your name circulates because that's what's gonna really start promoting your brand. And that's what all that branding and, and uh, marketing that you did on the front end is really gonna take hold. So those are the three things that I would do. Um, again, I don't think it really comes down to the equipment. Equipment comes with time. It's all of the stuff on the back and that no one sees. That's what makes a good business in my eyes. And that's what makes a sustainable business through economic change or any, you know, weather, whatever it is that's going on in the world. If you got a strong presence in your community, you got a strong brand in your community, you, you do what you say and you say what you do effectively, your business should not ever have any problems. And you should only see vertical growth. Um, you will have troubles, but uh, that's what I think really it comes down to. I wanna thank you for watching this video today. Uh, this is a topic I'm really passionate about. I think that business is really uh, interesting and exciting, and I think that there's more to share, and I think that as business owners, um, there's always something that we can learn from the next guy. Again, I don't know everything. I'm not perfect at everything. These are just the things that have worked for me and my business, and I hope that they provide value to you. So again, let us know in the comments what other videos or topics that you want me to discuss or how I've done it at Foxscapes. Um, I'd love to talk about it and, and share kind of the journey of what we have accomplished so far and where we're going into the future. So again, let us know what you think. We thank you for watching and have a good one.